Jeremy, and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, we're going to look at how you can expose parameters that allow the user to not only pick solid color values, but also input images using the element image value type. Let's dive in. So here we are in Instamat Studio, and we're looking at an element graph. And so what we have here is we have this arrow shape here. It's one of our shape generators in the graph library. And you can see it's connected to this opacity mask in our blend node. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to control the colors of this arrow and this background separately. Now, you might be inclined to be using solid color nodes to do this, to pick our solid color values. However, Instamat offers a better way to work with color information using something known as the element image value type. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these nodes and hit delete to remove them. And I'm going to draw your attention over to the panel here on the right. This is the graph object editor, or what we call the GOE. And I can bring this up by clicking on this little element icon here in the top, or I can press shift and one. And what's really nice is I can remove this panel when I don't need it so I can make some more room in my graph. Now I want to look at two sections here. We have the inputs or graph inputs, and then we have the local variables. Now, for inputs, graph inputs are public, and they can be controlled from outside of the graph. And you can think of the parameters that you find on materials that allow you to control their properties, such as how many bricks there are, or the intensity of the cracking and edge wear. You know, that's all the exposed parameters for that material. And so you can create those here in this inputs section. But we also have local variables. And local variables are private and can only be accessed from within this particular graph. And so what I want to do is I want to create a local variable here to control this foreground, in which case this will control this, uh, this arrow here, the color of the arrow. So I'll go to local variables. To create a new one, I can just go to this plus button here and click add local variable. And we can see a list of all the different value types that Instamat offers. So I could go ahead and click element image here, or I could start typing and I could search. For example, I could type in image and we have element image and I can hit return. So now I've created my local variable here. Let's give it a name. I'll just double click where it says variable and I'm gonna call this arrow color and hit enter. Now, this is really cool. You can see if we mouse over here, there's this little blue line. If I drag this, I can give some, myself some more space. But if you wanted to do this quickly, here's a fun quick tip. You can double click this separator and it's automatically going to shift over this slider so that you can see all the text to see what the names of your variables are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this arrow color local variable into the canvas and you can see it becomes a node here and I can hook it up to the foreground of this blend. And so now if I increase the saturation, I can adjust the color here and pick the color for my arrow. Now we've created this local variable, which means it's private and only accessible within this graph. But what if I want to make this public and turn it into a graph input? Well, I can do that by right clicking on the local variable here and choosing promote to input parameter. And so now it's a graph input and it's now going to be visible from outside of the graph. Now I want to show you a quicker way of creating these graph inputs here by working within the canvas directly. And so what I want to do is I also want to expose this background pin. So what I can do is I can drag a connection off of the background input of my blend, let go to bring up quick search. And you can see quick search gives us these two actions here. We can expose background as a graph input or also as a local variable. And you can see it says background here because it recognizes the name of the pin we just dragged from. But if I want to give it a custom name, I can. I'll just type in something like, let's do background color. And then I can hit enter or return here, or just click on it to make this a graph input. So you can see it's very quick to create graph inputs directly in the canvas with quick search. And I'll go ahead and increase the saturation here and change my color. So just like that, we've exposed our two variables here, our two graph inputs, and now I can independently change the color of this arrow and the background. But why are we using element image value types instead of the solid color node? Well, element image values provide some extra functionality that give us a little more flexibility in the way that we work. And you might have guessed that it has something to do with the word image in the name. Because with element image values, we can provide not just solid color information, but images as well, all from the same graph input. 
And so now I'm just going to demonstrate that here. Let's give us some more space. And again, I'll double click here to make some room so we can see the names of our graph inputs. So you can see for the arrow color, I can pick a different color here if I want to. But if I want to choose an image, I can go ahead and click this little pencil icon. You'll see all the images available to you, whether it's in your graph library, the user library, or in your package. And so in this case, I'm just going to pick something like this colorful Instamat icon here. You can see now that this image now takes the, the, the place of where that color was, and now our arrow has been colored by that image that we've chosen. And that's what's so great about using an element image value type, because we have that flexibility. And I can go back and press the X here, and I can use a solid color here if I'd like. I'd also like to mention that we have a grayscale equivalent of this as well called the element image gray. So if I bring one of those in here, you can see that you know this is really useful for uh, grayscale based maps. So for example, maybe I have something like my roughness. And so if I wanted to, I could dial in a very solid flat roughness value here, or I could supply something like a grunge map by inserting an image. So element image and element image gray, they're really powerful value types that extend the functionality of your elements created in the element graph in Instamat Studio. With the element image value type, you can input both solid color values and images using the same input parameter. And in Instamat's element graph, there's a huge assortment of different value types that you can combine together into one graph to create procedural PBR materials, texture assets, and build scalable 3D asset creation workflows. To learn more about the element graph and these value types, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here you'll find an ever-growing library of videos detailing the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.